Hello and welcome to this video. In this video we're going to be installing Azure Red Hat OpenShift, also referred to as Aero, A-R-O. Uh, it's a fully managed platform and built from a collaboration of Microsoft and Red Hat. Uh, so again, it is fully managed, uh, so you will build the platform, uh, it will interact as normal. Uh, support comes from both Microsoft and Red Hat. There's a unified team that provides support, so you can actually contact either company to get support for the platform. Um, and uh, it's, it's pretty simple. There's no VMs you have to build. There's no uh, ARM scripts or anything you have to worry about. You literally just run some AZ commands and your platform will be up and running. Uh, I think it's uh, probably one of the easier solutions out there. And again, having mutual support from both companies is, is pretty impressive. So we're gonna go through how, uh, how that install works today. Uh, a couple of prereqs though. Uh, obviously you need a subscription uh, to, uh, to Azure. Um, for my scripts, you're going to need the JQ command. I'll put all these links in the description. You'll, you're going to need the JQ though. You're also going to need the Azure CLI. Uh, I'm on Linux over here, so I've downloaded the uh, Linux um, version of the CLI. And they do have a tutorial that's available. Uh, I'll also put this in a link. Well, actually I won't because it's going to be in my uh, script that I'm going to show you next. Uh, and then I, I've already prepared a uh, uh, Arrow script install script for you. So you can just go through this to do the installation. Uh, I know it might look a little complicated, but uh, it's actually pretty easy. Uh, and what I typically do in these scripts is I, I just do everything by uh, environment variable. So this will make it a little bit easy for you to uh, to build everything together. And we're going to go through this together as we uh, do our install over here. All right. Um, so all that information is available. Uh, there are uh, one other thing you need to do is the you know, default subscription usually comes with 10 CPUs. You need to increase that to 40. Uh, and I do have a link down here uh, that shows you how to do that. And I've already done that for my environment because I, I've used it a few times now to do builds. So that's already done. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. And uh, yeah, let's just start right off with my script here. Uh, oh, uh, I did forget one other thing you're going to need is your pool secret. Uh, and what I've done is I've just saved that as a file uh, on my uh, uh, local directory over here. And I'm going to grab this when I uh, uh, do the install. Uh, if you're using your own DNS, uh, you can absolutely do that. Just pass that in with a domain flag, and then uh, you'll want to create the uh, DNS records for your API and your wildcard. And uh, here's the query in order to get those records, uh, or get those IP addresses, rather, after your install is complete. So you grab those IPs, put those in your DNS server, and you're up and running. Now let's talk about this cluster resource group. Now when you do the build, what's going to happen is uh, it's going to build a OpenShift uh, type and it's going to land that uh, uh, you'll see an OpenShift type in this resource group uh, and it'll, it'll associate itself to your cluster name and it will then dynamically create a cluster resource group that all of your artifacts uh, objects will be installed inside of so it will spin up this dynamic uh, cluster all right or cluster resource group now if you uh, want to give it a specific name, uh, which is what I'm doing here, uh, you can. There's a flag that just says, you know, cluster resource group, and then uh, associate a cluster name to it. So that gives you a resource group, gives you a cluster resource group with the artifacts installed. So this is sort of a pointer to this one, and then um, you know everything else. So the the nice thing about doing that is if you go back because we're we're pre-creating all this, you do not create the cluster resource group. It will do that for you. Uh, so when you, because you're pre-creating the resource group and uh, all your networking, when you delete the cluster, all of this stuff remains. Uh, the cluster resource group, the dynamic objects will all be removed, but your resource group and all your networking uh, will remain. Uh, so that makes it convenient to spin it up, test it out, and uh, uh, drop it without affecting anything else in your network. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll create our resource group first. And we could do that from um, command line. Um, and I think I've got that, yeah, I've got that down here. So we're just going to work through um, creating all these objects from the AZ command uh, instead of through the UI. <clears throat> uh, and I think I've already, I'm already on my uh, subscription, but if not, you can set your subscription here and we need to apply all these. Uh, we need to register uh, these things with our subscription. So let's copy those out and we'll provide all that here. I apologize, I should have cleared my screen first. I'll clear that. All right, now uh, let's go ahead and create our resource group. I'm going to uh, export my resource group. 
Okay, so we'll do a cluster resource group. Let's say OCP dude RG. And then our cluster resource group could be OCP dude cluster resource group. And then our cluster name. And we'll say OCP demo. And then our network uh, resource group, OCP dude net RG. And our VNet uh, OCP. Net our master sub master sub our worker subnet worker sub and then we will have a service principle that's assigned so let's go ahead and give it a name and we'll just say uh, uh, service principle Okay, um, we're already on our subscription. Like I said, we did this. So now we create our uh, resource group. Done. And then we will create our network resource group. Done. Our CIDR. And then we'll configure our networking, create our subnets. Okay, next one. Okay, disable our private links. Okay. And then this one here, we're going to assign our SP to our scopes for our subscription uh, and those subscription resource groups. So I have to get here. And you can. Uh, Attach all these subscriptions in one line. Let's see, that's network. I think I got network. Yeah, net. So we need it's network, network, network. Where's the other one? Network. Here it is. Let's grab that. Paste. And then I'm going to do the primary sub. And you might not need the primary subscription. I'm just, uh, I had it written out, so I figured I would do it. All right, so that looks like the subscription resource groups. Okay, and then we'll do the th same thing, but we'll uh, assign the uh, administrator access, user administrator access. And I'll grab this, copy that paste and then we need to assign the uh, network contributor to our uh, network resource group okay and then uh, we will grab our service principal store that as a file okay and then we can export our uh, app ID and password 
And let's just check that. Okay. And then we are ready to go, ready to create. Now, like I said, I've already got my pull secret stored locally, so it's just gonna grab it from the local file system and we should be good. All right, let's paste that in there. And this will take about 45 minutes uh, to build everything. And then we can come back and check it. Next steps would be to uh, fetch our console and our admin password. And then uh, we can either access it through the console or through the uh, CLI. The only difference really between um, doing an Aero install and uh, doing um, like IPI or something on, on Azure is uh, you don't provision VMs. So they're all gonna be managed behind the scenes for you. You don't have anything to worry about. You're just laying down uh, an Aero cluster uh, on top of Azure and uh, they'll take care of everything else. Okay, so I'll see you in uh, I don't know, 30, 45 minutes whenever this gets finished. Okay, looks like our install is finished. Let's go check things out. Uh, where's Azure? Here we go. Home, resource groups. All right, there's our resource groups, <clears throat> pardon me. And we'll look at uh, our primary resource group here. And you can see the AC uh, uh, OCP demo, uh, which is a OpenShift cluster type. And that should be now in our uh, cluster resource group with all of our, yep, with all of our objects. So that's all been installed there. And then our network. Under here, here's our VNet, and uh, obviously our two subnets are provisioned. We have all of our resources here, and look at the subnets right there. It's all done. Uh, okay, great. Let's uh, go to the next step, which is to grab our credentials. And there we go. And let's just. Uh, see if we can grab our console copy paste and there's our console grab that add a new tab okay and our password and this is kub admin password We've now accessed, looks like it's still building, but we've accessed our cluster. <clears throat> and of course we could do that with our CLI as well. And log in with our API server, kube admin, <clears throat> and then our password. Copy, paste. There we go, go see get nodes. And here's all of our uh, arrow nodes. And that's it. We've got a nice new cluster built on Arrow, which is, uh, again, a fully supported cluster from the collaboration of Microsoft and uh, Red Hat. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty easy. All right, so that's it. Oh, uh, I will show you removing it, too. Um, so let's go to this oh yeah, right here. If you want to delete your cluster, we can just run this string, and that's going to delete everything. Uh, maybe not. Let's see, what did I do wrong here? Cluster name. Oh, release group? No. Nope. Typo. I'll change that and update GitHub. Resource group. Yes. Great. That'll tear everything down. Uh, but again, what what will end up happening though is the uh, primary resource group and the network resource group, as well as the VNet and the uh, two subnets, uh, will remain. This dynamically created cluster resource group will be removed, and then of course all of the uh, objects within that resource group will also be removed. That's it for this video. Thanks a lot.